Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video on the Spigot series. Today I'll be teaching you how to do boss bars and titles with the Adventure Library. Hey guys, I'm back. I haven't made a video in like two months. So I'm just going to warn you that I have no idea what I'm doing. I forgot how to be a YouTuber and uh, hopefully my audio sounds okay. Um, I am a little sick right now, so my voice may sound weird, more weird than usual, so bear with me here. But today I've got an exciting episode for you guys. Um, I made a video previously on the Adventure Library, introducing it to you and uh, showing you how to do text uh, chat stuff with the text part of the library, which is really cool. Very powerful stuff that you can do really easily. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Um, it, should pop out it should pop up at the top right as I'm saying this. And uh, yeah, so what I'm going to teach you today is how to do boss bars and titles using the Adventure Library. And of course you may say, why would I want to do that? You can already do boss bars and titles with the regular Spigot Library, but Adventure Library offers an abstraction over the regular Minecraft you know, plugin development libraries that it makes it way easier for you to do these things. So you can easily make boss bars pop up for players or multiple players and titles as well. So it makes it much more simple, as you can see here. And so I'm going to link this in the description below. You can have a link to all the, the documentation here for, uh, for you to look at yourself if you want to look at that and have it as a reference. But in this video, I'll be showing you how to do everything as well. So you can see firsthand how to make basic plugins that use boss bars and titles. And now you don't have to rely on the unwieldy spigot library to do such things, okay? So like I said, go check out the previous video before checking this one out. But you don't have to. Um, it's all pretty simple. What we need to do first is actually install. Adventure Library to so this new project I just created here. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So platforms, bucket, and just go ahead and copy this. And we're going to put this into our palm.xml. XML. And yes, my IDE looks really weird right now. That's just because right now I'm using the preview version of um, the new IntelliJ IDEA uh, user interface. So that's why it looks pretty alien. Um, I'm just testing it out. Um, this is not a plugin. I mean, it is a plugin, but it's not something that you can install yourself. The preview is closed. So a lot of people have been asking me why it looks like this, and that's why, okay? So it'll go back to normal eventually, but for now, I'm just keeping it like this because it looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so this is how you install it. Just add it to your dependencies and your palm.xml for Maven. And then after that, make sure you click the thing at the top right. It usually pops up right here on the old UI. So make sure to click that and you should be good to go, okay? So the first thing I want to do is show you how to do boss bars, and then I'll show you how to do titles after that. So um, boss bars are pretty cool. Uh, of course, if you don't know what it is, let me put a picture on the screen right now so you can see what a boss bar is. And yeah, so they're pretty useful for many different things. You can do a countdown. You can show them like the amount of points that a player has, you know, various things such as that. So you can, you can control the amount of uh, how filled the boss bar is. You can add a message to the top of the boss bar. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so here's our basic class that we're going to be using, uh, command class. It's going to be a countdown command, so whenever you do slash countdown, it'll show a boss bar at the top for the player, and it'll just count down from like 10 or something like that, okay? So that's how we're going to test out this feature. Oh, one other thing we forgot to do is that we have to set up the adventure library within our main class here, so that we're able to grab it within the other classes. So I've already shown this in the last episode on adventure library, so I'm not going to go over it, you know, step by step. I'm just going to go ahead and copy a bunch of stuff. Okay, here we go. So now um, this will essentially allow you to call this method within other classes. And this will give you access to the bucket audiences thing, which is part of Adventure Library, which will enable you to do stuff like sending boss bars to players, sending messages to players, sending titles to players, um, etc. Okay. So inside of here, we need to get access to this uh, this method here, right? But it's not static, so we have to actually get an instance of Adventure Lib Boss Bars Title Java, this class here, within that other class. And the easy way to do that is just to do private final Adventure Lib Boss Bars Titles plugin. And then you can do alt enter, add constructor parameter, which, which will just create a constructor and then pass it in for it to be set. And then now here within our on enable method, when we register our command, so we'll get command countdown, count down dot set executor, we can do new countdown command. And then now for the constructor, when you're creating this new object here, you can pass in this because this is the plugin. So that will enable you to pass it in. Now it's going to be set. And now you can use it down here, okay? Pretty simple. I've shown this many times before, but um, yeah. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get an audience. That's like the person who you're sending stuff to with an adventure library. So an audience, audience, audience is equal to, import that, this dot plugin 
dot adventure that library that method I told you about. That's going to return bucket audiences, and with bucket audiences, you can do all these different things here that we saw before. So we can get a player audience from a player object. We can get um, an audience from a UUID, an audience from a server server name. So that'll get pretty much everyone on the server, I think. Um, an audience on a world. So I guess everyone on the world, I would assume. Yeah, so it gets an audience for online players in a world. It's all pretty self-explanatory. Again, an audience is just the person, the, the recipients of whatever you're trying to do. For example, sending a boss bar, okay? So anyone who's in this audience object will be receiving that boss bar that you're sending to them. So in this case, we have a command, right? And a command has a command sender. So we can either first cast the sender into a player like we usually do, and then create an audience out of that, or we can just do dot sender, pass in sender, and then that will give us an audience based on that sender for us to send boss bars to. Okay, so now that we have someone we can send the boss bar to, we're gonna actually create the boss bar, okay? So now we can do boss bar, countdown bar, countdown bar, make sure to import boss bar from adventure library. And now we can do boss bar dot boss bar. And you can see there's four different versions of the boss bar method here that we can use to create a new boss bar. So they're all pretty similar. Um, first, you want to give it a name. So we can give it a name by doing component dot text. And to the inside of this, you just pass in the text that you want to be. So we'll say countdown boss bar. Okay, and that will be that. And then now you need progress. So the progress will be the amount uh, of how filled the boss bar is. So like I told you before, the boss bar can be controlled in the sense of how filled it is. So it can either be unfilled or completely filled, halfway filled, etc. And this is going to be a, a float value from 0 to 1. So 0 0.1, 0, 0 0.5, 1, all those options, okay? 0 to 1, all right? So we're just going to set it to halfway full. So we can see what that looks like. So we'll do 0 0.5, which is half of one, obviously. So F for floats, by the way. And then now we can specify the color of the boss bar, which is really cool as well. So we can specify the color by doing color, dot, and we have all these options here. So uh, we can do, let's do pink. I like pink. So we'll do a pink boss bar. And then the final option here is the overlay. And the overlay is just going to be um, essentially the appearance of the boss bar. So there's different versions of boss bar. So let me show you. So we can do uh, overlay dot, and we have these different ones. So we have notch six. So that's going to have like six partitions in the boss bar. Uh, notch 10, which will have 10 different partitions in the boss bar. 12 for 12, 20 for 20. And then we have a progress boss bar. We have a names boss bar. So there's different versions of boss bars you can play with. Um, so I recommend just, you know, playing with them to see what they look like. But the one we're going to do is just the 10 one. So we just want 10 different uh, notches on the boss bar because we're going to be counting down from 10 all the way to zero. And there we go. That's how easy it is to create a boss bar using Adventure Library. First, you get a name, how filled it is, the color, and the overlays, so the type of the boss bar, okay? And if you want to, you can customize this, you know, this name component even more. Um, if you watched last episode, you know how to work with these text components. So you can just do like dot color. You can give it a color if you want to. So we can say um, named text color dot white if you want to or any color that they offer okay all right so now that we have a boss bar we have to actually make it appear for the audience right which is just going to be the one person who ran the command so to do that it's actually really easy of course so we're going to do audience dot show boss bar and then pass in countdown bar and that will show the boss bar for the player and it should look pretty cool it's not actually going to be counting down because we haven't added any logic for that but we'll do that in a second okay and then we want to go ahead and return true from the command we forgot to do that all right, so now we've created a new command here, which will get an audience from the person who ran the command. It'll then create a boss bar and then send it to the audience member, which is the person who ran the command, and then send them a message. So pretty simple. Uh, we already registered the command here in the onEnable method. Let's go ahead and register it in our plugin.yml. Boom. So we'll do commands. Um, we'll call it countdown, of course. Countdown is a description. Counts down using a boss bar. Boss bar, not boost bar. There we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and compile this using Maven, and then I'll see you in the server. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, I'm on the server now, so I'm going to do slash countdown. And there we go. We get a countdown boss bar. So we can see it's split into 10 different partitions. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's why we selected that for the overlay. And you can also see the title, which looks pretty cool. It's in white because we set it to white. Um, and you can see it's also filled halfway because we set it to 0 0.5 float, which is half of 1. One means full, zero means not full, completely empty. 
So yeah, that's a basic way to create a boss bar. So now let's see how we can make it into a countdown just so we can make this uh, even more advanced. All right, so to simulate a countdown, all we're gonna do is use a simple bucket runnable that's going to access a countdown variable and just decrement it every time it runs until it reaches zero. And then it's going to also change the progress of the boss bar so that it's decreasing in value every single time it runs, okay? So the way we can do that is by having something like integer countdown is equal to, we can say 10, because it starts at 10. Now, now we want a bucket runnable that repeats, so new bucket runnable. So we can do run, override that. And so the code inside of here is gonna represent the code inside of the runnable that's gonna be repeating, repeating every time. So we can do countdown minus minus to decrement that. But because it's inside of a bucket runnable, and just the way that these work, you can't access it directly like this. So you have to do a little bit of a, a weird solution. So you can do alt enter. You can say transform countdown into, one, into final one element array. So this is an interesting way of enabling you to access this primitive value within the bucket runnable here without issues, okay? There's different ways you can do it, um, but this is an easy way of doing it, okay? So what we're gonna do is count it down every single time, that's line 37, and then after that, we wanna say if countdown zero, it's a single element array, so that's why we're just doing countdown zero, which just represents the single number that we were working with before. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna do if countdown zero, if it's less than or equal to zero, then we want to you know end the countdown or cancel the bucket runnable. So we'll do that by doing audience dot hide boss bar. So that will remove it from the player's view so you can pass in countdown bar. And then now you want to cancel, which is just gonna be canceling this entire bucket runnable here so it won't run anymore. It'll break out and go to the next part of your code here, okay? And then also what we wanna do is if it's not less than or equal to zero, we want to then go ahead and modify the progress of the countdown boss bar. So we can do countdown boss or countdown bar dot progress and this is just how you change the progress. So currently by default it's 0.5. We're actually gonna change that to one, so it's completely filled. And then now we want to do progress. Um, that's gonna be equal to countdown bar dot progress. We're gonna get the current progress and just subtract it by 0.1, which is just one little partition. And that just makes sense because you know there's 10 0.1s within one. So one divided by 10 is 0.1. So this would be the same thing as, you know, if this was 10, for example, then you would just do minus one every time. But because it's one, we're gonna do minus 0 0.1 every time. And also because it's a partition, it's partitioned to 10 different notches, this will look awesome because it'll just go by, it'll go down by one notch every single time, which will make sense, okay? So that will modify how it looks. It's gonna look like it's counting down, which is nice. But also what we wanna do, let's just go ahead and send a message when it's complete. So sender dot send message, uh, boss bar countdown complete. Awesome. And then now we want to actually schedule this bucket runnable here. So run task timer asynchronously. So this dot plugin. And then now we want to say uh, how long to wait before starting to run this. We'll say zero. We don't want to wait. And then the period will be how long to wait before repeating this task. So we'll say every second we want to run this. So 20 for one second. Because 20 ticks is equal to one second. So 20 times one is 20. One small change that we're gonna make here is we're gonna add an or, and we're gonna say if countdown bar dot progress, if it's uh, minus 0 0.1 float is less than or equal to 0, 0.0 float, then we're also gonna cancel and finish the boss bar, okay? This is just because there may be a condition where the progress of the boss bar may become zero or less than zero before um, this becomes zero or less than zero, the countdown actual value here, okay? So you can just recode this to account for that fact, but I just added that there because it's easier. But anyway, the point is, is that it will count down every second and it'll just modify the boss bar every second to look like it's counting down, which should look pretty damn cool. By the way, this is an asynchronous task, so it's running alongside everything else, essentially, so it's not gonna degrade the server um, performance or anything like that. It'll continue running everything nominally. It's not gonna pause just to work on this, okay? So now I'm gonna throw this in the server and I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna do slash countdown now. Looks like it's counting down, awesome, look at that. Looks beautiful. Now when it reaches the bottom, it should disappear. Awesome, and it says boss bar countdown complete. So everything works as we want it to, and it looks really good. Um, yeah, awesome, <laughs> pretty cool. So that's how you can make a boss bar using a virtual library. One thing I wanna modify is I'm just gonna change it, so it's gonna say countdown and then the actual number it's counting down from. So let's go ahead and do that real quick, just so it looks nicer. So we'll say countdown, 
colon 10 because that's what it starts at or we'll just put it inside of here there we go and then now every time we're going to not only modify the progress but we're going to also modify the title all right so i got this piece of code here um, all it's doing really is just setting the name of the boss bar which is simple enough but it's going to be setting it to countdown colon and then it's going to set it to the actual number that we're currently on in the countdown and the color is going to depend on whether it's uh, less than or equal to five if it's less if the number is less than or equal to five, it's going to be red. Otherwise, it's just going to be it's going to continue to be white. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this looks. All right, I'm back. So let's do slash countdown, and we get countdown nine, eight, seven, six, five, and then you can see it turns red. Four, three, two, one, boom. Awesome, right? Looks pretty cool. Um, so that's what I meant by a countdown on the on the title. So there you go. So there you go, that's how you can make a boss bar using Adventure Library, and that's how you send it to a specific player. Of course, you can send it to as many people as you want, as long as you get the audience for those people. You can send it to the entire world, the entire server, uh, multiple people, it's all up to you, really. Now we're gonna show you something very similar, which is with titles, which is, uh, it's also pretty easy to work with. So here's what a title looks like, in case you don't know what a title looks like. Um, that's what we're gonna do with this. And it's actually gonna be way easier than how you would normally do it with the Bucket API, the Spigot Library. Um, it's way, way easier. So um, let's get started. Okay, so to demonstrate the title features of Adventure Library, I'm going to make a simple part of this plugin where every time you break a block, it keeps track of the amount of blocks that you've broken. And then when you do slash check, it'll tell you how many blocks you've broken with a title sent by Adventure Library, okay? So I've created a basic hash map within the main plugin class here that stores a player along with the amount of blocks that they've broken, okay? and we can access this within any other class by passing in the plugin instance to that class, okay? Now, we've also made a listener here that will also trigger whenever someone breaks a block. So inside of here, we're going to modify that hash map to update the values within the hash map so that when we run the command, we can get the current value of the blocks that they've broken, okay? So to that, we're going to do player, p is equal to e dot get player. And then we're going to do if plugin, oh, well, we need to pass an instance of this plugin, don't we? So private, Final Adventure Library Boss Bars Title Plugin, and then put that into the constructor here. And then now we can do this dot plugin dot get blocks broken dot contains key p. So what this will say is that if the hash map currently contains the player, this means that they've broken a block and they're in the hash map. Okay, so we're going to go in and update the value. So plugin dot get blocks broken dot put and we're going to do p so so it knows who we're updating it for and then we're going to do plugin dot get blocks broken dot get p plus one so we're getting their current value and incrementing it by one because they just broke a new block right and then we'll just send them a message saying um, you have broken and then however many blocks they've broken blocks Pretty simple. Um, oops, wrong one, send a message, there we go. So that will just update their value and also send them a message. Otherwise, otherwise, if this is false, that means that they have never broken a block on the server and they're not in the hash map. So we're gonna add them to the hash map. So plugin, dot get blocks broken, dot put, p, and then one, because they just broke their first block. And then we'll do p, dot send message, you have broken your first block, nice. Pretty simple stuff, okay? So that will do that, and then now inside of our commands package, we're going to make a new Java class called check command, and this will again send them a title telling them how many blocks they blocks they have broken. So Oakland's command executor, boom, 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 boom. There we go. First thing we want to do is get the instance of the plugin yet again. So private final adventure lib boss bars titles plugin. Bada bing, bada boom. And then now the first thing we want to do is first of all see if the sender is instance of player. So if sender instance of player, and then we'll do uh, player p player sender. And then now we want to say if this dot plugin dot get blocks broken dot contains key p. So if the player is in the hash map, this means they've broken a block, and we want to send them a title, send them a title. Otherwise, if they're not in the hash map. Uh, then we're going to do nothing because we have nothing to show them. They have not broken a block, so there's nothing to show them, of course. So we'll say else. Uh, if they're not as a player, we'll say else. Um, sender dot send message. You must be 
a player to execute this command. All right. So to send them a title, I'm just going to copy a piece of code that I took from Adventure Library, their documentation, and I've just modified it a little bit, and I'll break it down for you, okay? So we're passing an audience, so the person you're going to send the title to, as well as the amount of blocks that they've broken, okay? And the title has two main parts. You have the actual main title as well as the subtitle, okay? So the main title is made up of a text component, so we're going to do component.text blocks broken. We're going to make that white color. And then we have a subtitle. It's just going to be the actual value of how many blocks they've broken, and we're going to put that in gold, okay? So here we're actually constructing the title. So we're doing title, dot title, main title, subtitle, pretty simple, pass those in. And then now here you just specify the times that the title is going to exist for, okay? So the first time works like this. It's the fade in time. So that's the amount of time it takes for the title com to completely start to show up. Then you have the stay on screen time, which is exactly how it sounds. That's how long the title will stay on the screen before it starts to fade out. And the fade out is the opposite of the fade in time. So it's how long it takes to fade out and become completely blank again. So you can specify these really easily just using the times.times .times method and you can specify the duration by using duration.of and you can have different options like of milliseconds, of minutes, of days, of seconds, um, etc. So it's pretty self-explanatory. And if you don't want to you know, work with these, you can just actually use the default ones by deleting, deleting this last part here. And then it'll just use whatever the default uh, fade in state and fade out times are, okay? But that's up to you. Um, so yeah, and then to show it to your audience, you just do target, that's your title, pretty easy. But now that we have this method, we can go ahead and use it by doing show my title dot, and then now we need to get the audience and pass that in. So this dot plugin dot adventure dot sender P, or we can do player P since we have a player object, player P. Okay, and then there we're passing in the, the amount of blocks that they've broken by accessing the hash map. So pretty self-explanatory there as well. So there we go. That's a simple check command. So when they do slash check, it's going to access their hash map, see if they're in it. If they are not in it, it's not going to do anything. If they are in it, it's going to tell them in the title how many blocks they have broken, okay? So now let's go ahead and register the listener and the command so that we can test this out, okay? There we go. And now we need to not forget this. So boom, check description, check your amounts of blocks broken. There we go. All right. All right, I'm on the server now, so do slash check. And nothing shows up because I haven't broken, broken any blocks. But if I do this, should there we go. It says you have broken your first block. Nice. Awesome. If I break another one, it says you have broken, broken 21 blocks, which is uh, not quite accurate. I don't know why it says that. Oh, I think it has to do with this, uh, just the string concatenation that's happening here. So I think it's just because I'm trying to add it. Um, I just need to put that in parentheses. But actually... Because I'm already updating this before this line, um, all I have to do is this. So I don't need to add the plus one there anyway. So that's probably why it's doing that. Just some string concatenation issues right there. But anyway, so now if I do slash check, it should say three. There you go, it says blocks broken, three. And it stays for a good amount of time, and then it fades out. So watch again, fades in, stays, and then fades out. Awesome, pretty cool stuff, right? There you go. That's how you can do boss bars and titles within the adventure library. It's much, much easier than working with it with regular spigot library. Um, in my opinion, it's a, it's a nice abstraction over that. So hopefully you found this video very interesting and very helpful. Hopefully you use adventure library in your plugins as well. And let me know if there's anything I missed or anything you want to see for the future. I'll be making more videos on adventure library coming up soon. So stay tuned for all of that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed and peace. Alright, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And uh, another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers, so you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can, get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. 
And the last thing I'm going to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.